Good morning everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I work on the black fur on black horses. So we've got lovely Sabrina here. Um, I'm just going to work on this section which includes some of the white blaze coming into the black fur and then all the different tones of fur as we move along the different structures of her face. So I'm going to carry on working on this section which is sort of a shadowed section following here and then as it goes lighter over here. So I've been using um, light base layers underneath as I do with most fur um, and mostly starting with a warm grey full. So I'm going to just put this warm grey full down here now and get my reference back up. So I'm still following direction of fur and using it very lightly. And my pencil isn't too sharp at the moment. Um, I sort of work with like a semi blunt when I'm adding down soft layers. I'm not too worried about any texture showing through yet either. I just want to get the colour down. And there's a tiny little vein by here. So I'm just going to leave that out for now. And we will come back to that. So I sort of work in like different sections of her face. So this is sort of the shadowed, uh, her shadowed section. And as it comes down to sort of the bottom of her face, it are more um, sort of brownish tones. So I'm also going to add a tiny bit of nugget pencil as well. Just down here, just to add in a little bit of brown. And the first few layers always look really odd. Um, just like I showed in one of my previous posts, calling them the ugly base layers. Um, they do look really weird at first, and they don't look like they fit in with the portrait, but it's all about building them up. And I'm going to go in with <clears throat> a cold grey, no, a warm grey 6. I'm just going to sharpen it. Now I'm going to follow these lines here, so I'm just going to overlap and blend them into this area now. And I'm constantly looking back at my reference to see how far this darker area goes, so it sort of comes a little bit over the top of this vein here and follows up. And then I'm also looking at fur direction. With horse faces, the fur direction changes constantly um, as you go over the different structures of the face. So as it comes down here, it sort of goes this direction, and then it comes up over the bumps, and then it comes over again and curves around, and then it curves this section. So I think it's really important when drawing horses to get the fur direction correct. Otherwise, it's not going to look quite right. So I'm just using sort of um, a strokes method now. I'm not shading one continuous. I'm just sort of using my pencil to flick so I get a little bit of fur texture. I 
and I'm making sure my flicks are not too long, they match the size of the fur in the reference. So if this was um, a horse with like a long winter coat, my um, the size of the flicks would be a lot longer um, to make him look really woolly, make her look really woolly, sorry. Um, but her coat is quite sleek and short, so I'm making sure that my strokes are really short as well. So I'm just going over the top as well. This helps um, to build that texture by going over the top of what you've already drawn. Plus it helps to start darkening as well. Instead of just pressing down straight away with hard pressure to get it dark, um, I build up my colour on top of each other. So that's why it's good to have a paper that has a lot of tuss and takes a lot of layers of pencil. So I've added this little bit a bit darker because I can see in the reference um, it's darker there. As we get towards the muzzle of a horse there's lots of different, um, uh, not textures, there's lots of sort of different lumps and bumps all over a horse's muzzle. Because um, you get lots of uh, sort of veins and where it goes into the muzzle and you've got a lot going on around the nose. I think that's why I really enjoy drawing muzzles. They're my favourite part of a horse to draw after the eye is the muzzle area because there's so many little bits going on. And now I've left this section here because this section is really dark. Um, so I will be going in with the warm grey six straight away. I'm just shading that in. And still paying attention to fur directions, so sort of like curves. My lines that I'm using are not like straight harsh lines, they sort of curve around. I'm just going over the top now, making sure um, I've got it all covered. I'm coming back around over here. So you can see as I'm adding on top then it's starting to get darker without me having to press too hard.
And I'm going to further darken this area by using my dark sepia pencil. So I'm going to start under here because this under this little vein is quite dark. So when I go into the dark areas, I use a little more pressure and then as I come out into the lighter areas, I use lighter pressure. So you get different uh, tones of the pencil. So when I'm working on my top layers as well, I make sure I've got a sharper pencil so it really starts getting into the tuss of the paper now. You don't want any of the white showing through. And I use a little harder pressure. It also helps um, to blend all the layers underneath together as well. So it does take a lot of time, um, sort of continually going over and building up your layers. It takes a lot of patience. Um, a lot of people ask me how I get my blacks really black and it is just going over the same area continually and building up the depth and building up the colour. You can see I'm not pressing down really hard straight away to get the dark. I'm just building up over the top. And I'm going to work my way down this section. So going back with my warm grey four as my base layer. I'm just going to add that section there. And this part here. And now this little cheek area is light and then it goes dark. So I'm going to add the warm grey here as well lightly. Just blending it into my other layers with so blends nicely and then bringing it down. I'm 
And then I'm also going to bring it across here as a base layer as well. And then it goes <clears throat> out into the lip sort of area. I'm also going to use a coral grey, there's quite a few coral tones in here as well. I'm just going to add this warm grey lightly first. And just sort of cover this section. But I don't want to go down too far, I want to sort of work my way across here. So I've lightly sketched out by here where the um, dark area of the muzzle is. So I'm just going to work down onto the light areas and stop when we get to the dark. So I'm going to use the cold grey 5 um, and blend it over this area. So again, when I use um, layers next to other layers, I always blend it into those colours. So they overlap and blend nicely. So it doesn't look like there's patches on the horse, it flows nicely together. And also when we get to the muzzle, um, there's no hair on a horse's muzzle. So we want it to look nice and smooth. Well, on the this area anyway, sometimes you'll get it coming down, but once you get to the proper nostril area, there isn't any hair. Um, well, there is, but there's like very, very, very fine, but it looks more smooth than the rest of the horse. So I tend to sort of use like a circular motion, so it's a nice smooth texture rather than a um, fur texture going on. I'm going to go in with um, a warm grey 6 and start darkening here. So following my reference to see where the dark areas are. Now I'm going to go back with the warm grey full. I'm just going to sharpen it and just start blending all this together now. So using like a medium pressure with sort of circular motions. But not too hard, just in case I want to get a few more layers on.
and then back of the warm grey. I'm sort of just building it up now. So I'm just looking where the darker tones are and the lighter tones. I don't want it all to be one colour because then it won't look real and you won't get much depth. So I'm going to make sure I get all the tones in. So I'm just going back and forth with my different warm greys. Now I'm going to use a little more of the nugget just in this section, just a little bit because I can still see some brown tones going on. But only very slightly. And then back over with the warm grey. And then I'm going to use the warm grey 4 just to blend these bits together and get a few little highlight parts. And then bring it down into the muzzle. So now I don't want to spend too long in this section for this video, so I'll probably go back to this section now. I want to make sure I get this part in the video too, so you can see how I get the um, blend the white into the black, just like I have up here. So I'm just going to study my reference a moment, just so I can see what colours I can see. So it comes down here and it gets very light, um, and there's lots of like white bits flicking in. Um, and I can see some like cold grey tones here, but this area is very light. So what I'm going to do is use this warm grey 4 um, and shade down here. Um, and then I might work on the vein and then go across. Um, so I'm just going to add this warm grey 4 in.
And then I'm also going to use some of the coral grey as well. I'm just going to use the coral grey 5. I'm going to bring this gold grey five around this area here. the warm grey right so I'm gonna use um, a coal grey too I think so I'm going to use the coal grey too, just to come down here now. And I'm just going to use sort of flicking motions to get the texture of the fur. I'm looking closely at the reference um, to see how far the light area is. And to keep an eye on the fur direction as well. And then I'm going to use the uh, cold grey 5 and just start flicking into the fur like this. So this white blaze sort of comes across and then there's like a little bit of it coming into the black fur. So just constantly looking back at my reference and replicating what I can see. And now I'm going to use my dark sepia. Way. I'm just going to sharpen it. And just start bringing it down. So there's like a curved area there. And then it goes up and leaves a point. And then it comes down. And then we sort of get these flicks coming into it.
This area is very dark, so I'm just mapping it out lightly with the dark sepia. And now I'm going to use a cold grey six. And bring this into the fur now and start darkening a little. And just start flicking it into this white area. Well, not white area, but the lighter area. Just so it all blends in nicely. And I'm going to go into the light area and start darkening it a little. Now it's not too much for the texture that I can see in the reference, just a little bit. Go back with the cold grey and just blend in these areas now with a little bit of pressure but not too much. And now I'm going to use um, Payne's grey just to darken these little sections here. So I'm still just building up the shape at the moment, trying to get everything looking correct. I'm going to use the dark sepia because this does come down a little further and sort of points in. I'm going to go in with the cold grey 5 and start darkening a little further. So like I said, it's all about building it up. So now I'm going to start working on this white area before I go back into this area um, and I'm not going to use a white pencil, I'm going to use my warm grey one first and just add a light layer of it. So I never leave um, any white blazers white, there's always some sort of tone and colour in white fur. So I'm just going to use the warm grey one first. And blend it into where I've just drawn there.
and bring it down. I'm just going to erase some of the graphite because we don't want the graphite showing through. Just going over and darkening it a little. And then once I've got the warm grey one down, I'll go in <clears throat> with the warm grey two and start adding in a little bit of texture. Um, and I'll work my way inward. So I'll go from the dark and sort of flick my pencil in. to get the fur texture in the blaze as well. So with blazes, the fur is always dark around the edges where um, the dark fur is sort of overlapping the lighter fur, or vice versa, where the light fur is overlapping the dark fur probably. Um, and then I'll start going into the middle of the blaze and just adding in a few strokes. It's only a very subtle amount. I don't go into too much detail with the blaze. Um, you don't want to overwork it. But just little bits like this really help. So I'm still looking at my reference to see where the darker areas of the muzzle are. Of the blaze, I mean. I said muzzle then. And then I'm going to use um, a little bit of cold grey as well. So I'm going to use the cold grey too. Only in a few parts. Yeah, so we don't want to overwork it. And if I find I have made it a little too dark, um, I'll use my mono eraser. I'm just going to make sure it's clean. And then just add in, well not add in, but erase um, some of the pencil, just a little bit so lighter. And you get some nice texture going on there. And then to further blend it all together, I'll go in with the dark sepia or whatever colour the fur is around the blaze and sort of flick the pencil in just like this. And then uh, use a cold grey. So it all depends on what colours you can see. Uh, where's my cold grey gone? There it is. And sort of like blend the darker part into the blaze. I'm also going to use um, the warm grey four, just a little bit in this blaze because there are some darker areas 
Now that I've added the light part in, I can see that this needs to be just a little bit darker in a few sections. Sometimes I will use the warm grey one again then. Actually I'm going to use the cold grey one I think because there's quite colder tones down here. And then bring it into the black area. So you can get some of the hair sort of flicking into the coat. And now I'll work my way down. So I'm going to use the cool grey to the cool grey six now. So I'm just blending all this coat down now. And go back with the warm grey. So it's all going back and forth and building it all together. And you're gonna really take your time, study your reference, and just draw what you see. And as I always say in most of my videos, don't go too dark too soon. You wanna build it up by taking your time and using lots of layers. that is how I draw my black fur. I've run out of time this morning now to go any further. So what I'll be doing um, next is working my way down, um, working on this little vein. Um, and then once I get to this section, I'm going to start filming again and it'll be a tutorial on how to draw the muzzle. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on how I draw the black fur and how I draw um, white blazes going into black fur. Let me know what you think and I hope you have a nice day guys. Bye!